My name is Kristen Rushing. I am a senior in the Diagnostic Medical Sonography Program, and I will be presenting on placenta previa. So my patient was a 33-year-old Caucasian female. She was 26 weeks and 6 days pregnant, a gravity of 1 para 0, so this was her first and only pregnancy, and the reason for this exam was vaginal bleeding. Now before this day, she hadn't had any previous exams, um, but on this day, she had technically three different exams performed, which was a transvaginal, a pregnant uterus limited, and a fetal age limited. And basically what these three were sent for was just to diagnose the previa and to estimate the fetal age since she hadn't had any prior exams. So we're going to start out by looking at the sonographic findings. All of these images that I'm going to show you are transvaginal images. They just gave us the best look at the edge of the placenta. So in figure one, you can see the echogenic posterior placenta coursing in front of the internal os of the cervix. You can see that hypoechoic area behind the placenta. That represents the retroplacental complex. In figure two, you can see the color Doppler image with the retroplacental complex being lit up with color. And the retroplacental complex is just the vessels which drain the placenta. So I also placed a yellow circle on there just to kind of show where it looked like the edge of the placenta was. And you can see that it is well beyond the internal os of the cervix. In figure three, this is a transverse image of the placenta with color Doppler placed on it, just showing the vessels running through the placenta. And this was taken as the sonographer was sweeping out of the cervix and into the placenta, just to show that it is lying over the internal os of the cervix. In figure four, this is another sagittal image. It's just measuring the cervical length, which came out to be 5.03 centimeters. This is a normal measurement for the cervical length it's just showing that there's no funneling or anything like that. You would definitely wouldn't want that at this point in the pregnancy, especially with placenta previa going on. That can lead to some complications. So the official diagnosis was placenta previa. It is where the placenta is entirely covering the internal os of the cervix. The placenta is considered to be the presenting part, and what the presenting part is is what is the closest thing to the internal os of the cervix, where in a normal pregnancy, it would be a part of the fetus, where here it's actually the placenta. Now, I don't want you to confuse placenta previa with a low-lying placenta. A lot of people want to use these terms interchangeably. A low-lying placenta is where the edge of the placenta comes within two centimeters of the internal os of the cervix. And again, placenta previa is where the placenta completely covers the internal os of the cervix. So the prevalence is about 5 out of 1,000 pregnancies worldwide, so it's not super common. But some common symptoms include vaginal bleeding and cramping, where my patient did have the vaginal bleeding. Risk factors include a maternal age above 35 years old, multiparity, smoking, previous placenta previa, and C-sections. And some common associations I'd like to note are preterm birth and a low birth weight. Also, failure to diagnose this can lead to fatal complications for the mom and the baby. This can cause rupturing of the membranes and hemorrhage if a vaginal delivery is attempted. We'll get more into this on the follow-up slide. But the earlier a previa is identified, the more likely it is to resolve before birth. So some statistics I would like to note is that around 20 weeks or before when a previa is identified, it has about a 90% chance of resolution. Whereas closer to 32 weeks, it has only a 25% chance that it will resolve before delivery. And this resolution can be from tropotropism. And what this is, is where the uterus grows as the pregnancy progresses. And it can cause the placenta to move more to the fundus of the uterus. It can move it away from that cervix. So as you know, about 20 weeks the uterus has more potential to grow and move it away from the cervix, whereas as you get closer to 32 weeks, it has less of a potential to grow and move it away. Some sonographic features include the placenta as the presenting part, again, as we noted earlier. And I would also like to note that as the pregnancy progresses, the placenta begins 
it starts out echogenic, but it begins to become more heterogeneous and hypoechoic. And also, color Doppler would be seen between the placenta and the internal os, as well as the uterine wall. And that, again, represents the retroplacental complex. The differential I chose was vasa previa, which is where the vessels of the umbilical cord course within the membranes across the internal os of the cervix. This can also cause vaginal bleeding, but it's often a dark color. Some risk factors include a velamentous cord insertion, a bilobe placenta, previous placenta previa, and C-sections. A velamentous cord insertion is where the umbilical cord doesn't insert directly into the placenta, but it inserts into the membranes. In a bilobed placenta is where the placenta has two or more lobes of equal size and they can be located in completely different areas of the uterus. Some sonographic findings for this would be an anechoic tubular structure lying over the internal os of the cervix and it would fill in with color when you place color Doppler on it. So follow-up ultrasounds are recommended for vasa previa. We'll see that they're also recommended for placenta previa just to kind of keep up with the progress on how that's doing. I know with placenta previa, we'll talk more about that here in a little bit, but they just want to monitor it. And usually transvaginal is probably the gold standard for vasa previa as well. C-section is also highly recommended for vasa previa just to prevent hemorrhage for this also. So for the follow-up, there was no known follow-up exams or information for this patient. She could have went to another facility and had follow-up ultrasounds performed, but we just didn't have any record of that. So I wanted to list some recommended follow-up options. These include follow-up transvaginal ultrasounds, and these again are the gold standard for diagnosing placenta previa. When you're scanning on top, you can't, sometimes you can't exactly see the internal os of the cervix or maybe the edge of the placenta. So if you're unsure of yourself, you could always ask the patient if you can perform a transvaginal ultrasound just to be sure of yourself. That helps you get closer to the cervix and be able to see it well. Delivery by C-section is also recommended. This is considered um, necessary because with a vaginal delivery, you have more of a chance of those membranes of the placenta rupturing, causing a hemorrhage, and this can be very fatal for the mother and the baby, as we talked about earlier. So a C-section is definitely recommended for these cases of placenta previa. Delivery could also be possible at 36 to 37 weeks, or even earlier, depending on if the patient is having excessive bleeding. So this kind of goes back to the association with the preterm birth. So in conclusion, my patient was a 33-year-old Caucasian female. She was 26 weeks and 6 days pregnant, and she was diagnosed with placenta previa. So the pitfall I chose was not performing a transvaginal ultrasound when previa is suspected. So again, I know we can get very busy during the day. We may not feel like performing another exam on top of what we have going on, but if you can't see that placenta edge and you can't see the internal os of the cervix, it would be better for you to go ahead and request a transvaginal ultrasound if the patient is okay with it. Just to verify that the edge of the placenta isn't covering the internal os because again complications can arise if this is not diagnosed. So that's very very important. And a teachable moment I found was the importance of proper documentation and representation. So when I was looking for a case presentation topic, I saw multiple cases of placenta previa, and sometimes they could be very hard to kind of decipher what was going on. And I chose this one because you could very well tell that the placenta was lying in front of the internal os of the cervix. So the way I see it is if you kind of get confused I think the radiologist could also get confused. So I think even if you have to annotate, okay, this is the placenta, this is the internal os of the cervix, you have to kind of demonstrate to him what's going on so that way the patient can be properly diagnosed. And these are my references. Thank you for watching.